Welcome to the Wood End Lions annual art show, the 46th in fact. We uh, carry this art show each year to raise money for community projects. Uh, we're involved in a number of community projects and look forward to your support. This year, because of the pandemic, we're not holding an opening night, but are recording the judges' uh, ministrations about the paintings that were chosen so that you can hear what, what happened and why they were chosen. And if you happen to be passing by on the weekend, come and see this high quality show. It's a really terrific example of what the, the local community can do. In the juniors, Edith Smart with Crowcorn and Lachlan Smart with Chaos uh, won both awards. This, for a seven-year-old um, or any age, is just so creative. Even love the way that the word, a new word has been formed out of crocodile and unicorn, crocorn, and the sense of humour. It's very strongly um, created, very strong image, but gorgeous smile on the face, love the dimples. Uh, it's cheeky and, and extraordinarily creative. Well, we, we found this uh illustration or drawing up here to be absolutely awesome and it's packed full of action, it's packed full of imagination, there's lots of movement happening and lots and lots of detail and uh, I love the way that uh, the buildings have been created, I love the way the these, um, they look like robots or, well they're obviously aliens from outer space um, are moving, there's lots of little lines around to show, show movement and so um, well done. Francis Spain won the best local artist with Dahlia One. We found this um, particular artwork to be outstanding. I was instantly um, drawn to it and just the complete artistry um, that's exhibited here. It's an incredible degree of technical expertise here. Uh, we both admitted that we actually don't like dahlias, but this is such a work of beauty that it was immaterial. There's such beautiful, beautiful detail in all the, the petals. The line work is just extraordinary, and um, even in the, the leaves um, on the dahlia. Um, there's an incredible sort of um, creation of light and shade and uh, it, it's really just a, a lovely, when you look at it, the more you look at it, the more detail you see and of course there's, you know, the little imperfections that you see on, on flower petals. But the technique, the detail of it, the tiny little lines in each uh, leaf are extraordinary, very mm. high degree of mastery of the technique, mm. as well as the creativity. The Photography Award was won by Joseph Garner, who, who took a photograph of Fuji. This is a great photograph of Fuji. Um, it's a photograph that I, I think um, presents a different perspective to any photograph I've seen of the mountain before. But I've, I've seen many, many photos of Fuji before. And normally they're um, with, during, a, uh, during cherry blossom time, but this is something completely different. It's a different perspective that I, I've never seen before. And it's, there's a real sharpness in the photo. There's a, an absolutely fantastic contrast of, of colours that have been captured there. You've got in the, the foreground here, you've got this and it's almost like pampas grass. And then of course you've got all this beautiful detail that hasn't been lost. It's, it's on the mountain, the, uh, the, the snow, uh, snow drifts. So it's, it's absolutely beautiful in the way that um, the detail has been um, captured in, um, in the photo. I love the drama of this work. It, extraordinary the way he has been able to highlight the foreground without um, diminishing the drama of the mountain and the background. Somehow he's managed to achieve this angle and perspective that just creates a whole thing of beauty, a whole work of beauty. The shapes are quite different and the texture is so beautiful. I mean, he's been able to convey that texture um, in, to, in great detail. 
without um, anything looking out of proportion. I really don't know how this photograph was taken. Gilbert Buchanan one was highly recommended for a, a photograph of Lake Ballard. I wanted to mention this particular piece, for, uh, a very unusual factor. Um, it almost is, a, it's almost surreal. It's very hard to think that this is the design in nature, that it's almost as if some very, very clever artist has created their own design. And yet you're reminded of its reality by things like what look like stones or rocks or something like that. Um, it's a fascinating, complex subject. It's very unusual. Bindi Lee Byrne won uh, other media. So this is a, a beautiful artwork. Um, there's lots of wonderful drawing, lots of fantastic line work in this and just incredible detail. It's a really dreamy piece. Um, you really feel the mist and mystery about it. It's so subtle. Everything is so subtle. This is one where there's been great perspective um, developed. You've got um, in the uh, in the foreground here you've got these wispy um, tufts of grass and then of course um, you move into the actual um, artwork and, and you see all the detail, the fine detail on the tree trunks and the beautiful um, foliage on, on the leaves. As you're moving back, um, uh, moving into the mist, basically the detail disappears and, and it becomes almost ghost-like at the back. You can feel a sort of flutteriness of these young leaves in it, but um, what I loved is you're feeling in this dreamy mood and then you suddenly see the little fox and it's a touch of reality. Mm. The best watercolour is Carolyn Marone, The Last of the Summer Days. Right, well this, this uh, watercolour uh, was one that I was instantly drawn to and I, I loved, I, I forgot that it was a, a painting and I immediately became involved in the story and of course these, these gentlemen remind me very much of uh, men that I've observed over the years at the Gladstone Park Shopping Centre on, on Pension Day and of course <laughs> they sit around, they've known each other for decades and, and of course they tell stories and they tell the stories told beautifully with the facial expressions, with their hands, the movement of their hands. It's ex expressionism. It's just full of life. It's so close to life. Um, and all of it is drawn and you've drawn into the story as we decided, but it's also the balance, the composition which is extraordinarily well set off, to set off the people in the middle. I mean, look at the detail, look at this little gecko, uh, and the grass and yeah. the pavement, mm. um, everything, every detail. Mm. Um, Even to his feet, not their feet not quite touching. touching and being different, mm. all being part of that individual personality. Mm. I can't see anything that isn't, that is out of proportion even their arms and hands, the detail, tiny detail of that watch track. And there's a beautiful use of, of light um, in mm. it, just on, the, on mm. their faces and on their clothes and lovely use of shadow on their underneath as well. Their arms mm. and faces, etc. So we love it. The best oil is by Richard Chkomersky, burning off Macedon. This little gem of a work, um, anyone would take pleasure in having on their walls. Uh, it's a local scene and it's so um, exquisitely pictured. Just the, the really subtle um, brushwork that's been used here. Um, lots of beautiful detail, uh, really harmonious use of colour and He's created a real stillness in the, the actual artwork, except for that, just that little wisp of smoke that's going up there and the little the glowing of the embers and the, the burning tree trunk. The burning itself, the log, you can almost smell the smoke. It's really evocative of a scene anywhere around the area, but also it's so realistic and yet so perfectly um, portrayed. 
there's a really um, great um, use of perspective and um, really excellent use of values uh, in this little artwork. It's so realistic and yet so perfectly um, portrayed. I love the attention to detail, those tiny, tiny little cows. And the mountain, it's, it's dominating without dominating the scene, mm -hmm. but you can see all the shadows on it, it in complete contrast to the trees mm -hmm. and the house yeah. and every other aspect of this little gem. Highly commended is Michelle Barton, Daffodil Rise. We really wanted to highly recommend this work for its depth of drama and its depth of contrast. I mean, this is presumably burnt out trees and the emergence right down here, we have new life emerging with um, the daffodils. And it, it takes you right inside the story here. You've, it's a very deep, black, what was a very depressing situation. And now suddenly you see this emerging of a future. And the best in show, Helen Cottle with Go With The Flow, number 21, a really wonderful piece. To both of us, it represents an artist at the height of their powers. The composition is so intricate. There's such attention to detail. The colour balance is extraordinary. This um, artist, I believe, has perfectly captured the, it's almost like the ruggedness and the beauty of the Australian landscape. And I, I believe this is someone who, who really knows um, the Australian bush. It conveys a, a whole emotional feeling of the wildness of nature, uh, stretching out endlessly. The way that she's managed um, the perspective in the actual artwork. There's that beautiful expanse of the horizon, but then there's fantastic depth that she's created as well. You can feel the life, you feel you almost can see the rustling of leaves um, and hear it. I love how the, the grass has a lean to it. The tiny detail of these flowers here in the foreground, the water, it's very soothing. The light, um, the way that she's created that and um, that's on the water and um, yeah, just, just throughout the, the actual landscape itself. So um, this immediately attracted me, it was just a standout.